Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. Today we're talking about key performance indicators. Normally when we think of a key performance indicator or KPI, we have three things to consider. Number one, what is the current value of the metric? Number two, what is the goal value of the metric? And are we above or below the goal? And number three is, what is the trend? Are things trending up? Are things trending down? Or are things trending about the same? And what do I mean by trending up or down? Think about sales. Let's say my overall monthly revenue was supposed to be $100, but yet in, in actuality, my revenue is 80. Okay, so I'm below the target, that's not good. But you know what could be worse? What could be worse is my sales are below the target and they're trending down. I would much rather be in a situation where sales are below the target but trending up and hopefully I can maintain that dynamic rather than be in a situation where my sales are trending down and that's really not looking good when I show the, uh, when I explain this KPI to my boss. Let's take a look at this report, for example. So here in this dropdown, I've selected my time frame for analysis. You can see that I'm looking at last four weeks relative to selected week, week 29 of year 2020. And here are the four data points for my sales. And then here I have a result of my trend calculation specifying the trend is up. And you could kind of gather by looking at this distribution of the data that if I were to draw a trend line through this chart, it would be pointing upwards, the trend is up. Now let's take a look at the trend for product A that I've selected on my chart. You could see that very clearly that the sales are trending down. We only have two data points in the last four week worth of sales. And we could see that our indicator says also the trend is down. Let's take a look at another example of a downward trend. Here I've changed our week selection to 16. So we have 16 data points in our time series and we're calculating the trend to be down. And we can also see by looking at the spread of the data that uh, if I were to draw a trend line through this data set, it would be pointing down. Obviously having a trend slice to explain your data is very beneficial. However, for some reason, this topic is not very uh, widely covered, uh, neither in Power BI, YouTube channels or blogs, nor in general uh, blogs uh, relative to the talk about key, uh, key performance indicators. So here in this video, in this tutorial rather, we will take a deep dive into how to calculate trend. I will make the, the model available for you to download. Please look for the link in the description of this video. And before we jump into the calculation, let's take a look at how this page is set up so the report makes a little bit more sense. So our data set is very simple. We have a fact table that tracks sales by product, by salesperson, by date. So all of those four columns are in the fact table and also the uh, sales value is the fifth column in that table. Here I've added slicers where you could select different products. We have A through E or different salespeople, or you could select the period in which we are gonna be doing our comparison. So in our case, uh, we're looking at last four, eight or 16 weeks of sales relative to the week that we have selected in this dropdown. So here you could pick any week, and then relative to this week, you can go back four, eight or 16 weeks and see what the average sale in that period is. This is a very simple type of analysis that you will see um, when you're looking at sales data. So now, now take, let's take a look at the table here that breaks down our average weekly sale by product. And also it's breaking it down by different categories, last four weeks, last eight weeks, last 16 weeks. So the way you see this, or the way you read this rather is, for product A, the average weekly sale in the last four weeks was $488.5. And we have a downward trend. Uh, if I click on product A, you will see that the sales are shrinking. So we, in one week we did $893, and the second week we did only $84. So you could see that the trend is downward. When you look at last eight weeks of data, the average weekly sale is $694 and the trend is actually up. So here I've plotted all eight data points for the last eight weeks. And there is quite a bit of variability, but our calculation indicates that the actual trend is up. And now we're looking at product A and in 16 weeks, we've plotted all of the data points. And then according to our calculation, we do have some peaks and valleys. So you can see that overall with all the peaks and valleys, when we flatten this out, move that out, our trend is actually the same. There is no good indications of sales going up or down. And the average weekly sales value uh, for the 16 prior weeks is $695.2. So hopefully now you understand uh, the value of trend and how 
trend actually gives a uh, very good additional uh, insight uh, with respect to the KPI or the value of the KPI. Now let's talk about how uh, we might go about calculating the trend. So speaking in strict mathematical terms, the best way to do this uh, answer is we have all of these different data points that we've plotted given the selection of weeks here in the slicer. The way for us to figure out what the trend is, we would want to do a regression figure out what the line is that runs through all of these data points, then look at the coefficient. And then by looking at the coefficient in this line, we would be able to figure out whether the line is going up or down. Now, I don't want to do any regression, so I've come up with a much simpler way to calculate our trend. Let me explain my logic. The logic is the following. I have n data points that I'm trying to analyze. I'm going to take the first half of the data points, calculate the average value for those. Then I'm going to take the second half of the data points, calculate the average value of those, then I'm going to compare the two. If my first n over two data points is less than the second, then the trend is up. If my if, if it's the other way around, so if I sum up all these data points and take an average and it's less than the previous value, then the line would be, have to go down. And you can kind of see this when I just look at this particular data point. I have two data points. Uh, the first one is higher than the last one. Therefore, the average value here will be greater than the average value here. So therefore, the line is trending downwards. Hope it makes sense. Now let's jump into the DAX Studio so we can walk through the, every step of this calculation and see uh, what the calculation actually does. So the first thing we do is we create a variable, selected week options value. Here I hard-coded number four just for testing purposes. Basically, this value will tell us how many weeks back do we want to look into our analysis? The second variable called current we year week will tell us what is the current week that we've selected. So uh, by looking at these two variables, what we're trying to do is we're saying for the week 29 of year 2020, let's take a look at all of the data we have going back four weeks relative to this week. The next variable is the most critical in this whole thing. So let's uh, peel it out layer by layer. What we're trying to do is we're trying to save, create a temp table, and in that temp table, save all of the data that we have for four weeks relative to our current year week. The first thing that we're going to we're gonna do is we're going to create a table that only has the weeks that are relevant in our scope. So uh, for the week 2020, 29, we have four weeks back. So it'll be week, let's say 26, 27, 28, and 29. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to use our top end function and top end function is going to go back four weeks. So it's going to get top four, which is this uh, variable here. And then it's going to use calculate table function. That's going to take a look at the year week column in our date table. So we just create uh, a column that uniquely identifies every week in a table. It's going to take a all of the values in this column, unique values, and then it's going to filter them out uh, in such a way that all of the weeks come before the week that we've selected here. And then we're going to take top n. This code here will just give me all of the weeks that came before uh, our week 2029. That top n will take the top four in our case of that list. So by the time this command ran, we are able to see only the weeks that fall into our selection. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take that column of all of the weeks that fall into our range and add another column to it called attempt sales. And we're going to calculate sales for that column. So when this add column command has run, we end up with a table that has in the first column all of our weeks and a second column that's named temp sales. It'll have sales for those weeks. The only other thing I've added was this filter condition where I want, I want to filter out all of the weeks that do not have any values. So now I'm going to run an evaluate command on our last n weeks of sales and see what happens. So you can see here that I have that table. I have four weeks of, of uh, that I've selected. So this is going to row, return up to four weeks. Uh, these are the weeks that lead to 20, 20, uh, 29, so they end at 28 and they calculate sales for all of those weeks. If I had, to, if I change this to, let's say eight, and I run that, then I will have a list of eight weeks that uh, go all the way to 28. So this list is not ordered, but that's okay. So here I, here I reran it for four weeks again, and these are the four weeks of data we have uh, for the weeks preceding uh, week 29 of year 2020. Please note that even though I have four selected here, 
and we see four rows come back in our result, we don't always, uh, we're not guaranteed to have four. Sometimes I may not have any sales in a certain week. So even though I might be looking four weeks back, I might get only two rows back or one or, or three or, or up to four. So I need to know uh, when this uh, variable is done, how many actual rows did I end up with? And that's exactly what this variable does. So in this variable, weeks in range, we're gonna take a look at our temp table, last number of week sales, and take a look at how many different week, weeks are in that data set in this temporary table. So I just evaluated the variable and it came back with number four. So we have four total weeks in our range. So we have data for four weeks. And now we're almost at the tail's end of the calculation. The first thing we, we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate what is the average value for the first half of our weeks. Then we're gonna calculate what is the average value for the second half of our weeks. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we have our table, it's here, last n weeks of sales. So we're gonna take a top n on that. How many top we're gonna take? We're gonna take number of records in this table, divide by two, and we're gonna take an int of that, which will give us, which will round it down. So if we have four, then this will come back to two. So we will have top two. And then when we're gonna do the first half, we're gonna order it ascending. So it's gonna pull top two from the bottom, if that makes sense, or bottom two effectively. And when we do the second half, we're gonna do the same formula, but we're only gonna do order it descending. So by order it ascending in the first formula and then descending in a second, ascending will give us first half of the data and then descending will give us the second half. Then we're gonna uh, average this out using the temp cell as the average calculation. And by the time these two variables have run, in first half, we're gonna have the, uh, the average value for the first half of the period. And in a second variable, we'll have average value for the second half of the period. And the very last thing we need to do is figure out uh, the, the slope, whether it's up or down. And the way we do that is that we're gonna divide first half by second half and analyze it. So let's divide first half by second half and see what that number looks like in our case. So in our case, the number is 0.85, let's say. So what does that mean? Anything less than one means that first half is smaller than the second half. And when the first half is smaller than the second half, then the slope is up, trend is up. If the first half is greater than the second half, this growth rate would be greater than one. And that means that the trend is down. How do I do trend equals the same? Well, let's flip into Power BI and see the actual if logic for that. So my actual logic for the trend is the following. If the growth rate is greater than 1.1, that means the first half is greater than the second half by at least 10%, the trend is down. If the growth rate is greater than 0 0.9, is less than 0 0.9, then the chain is up. And then if it's between 0 0.9 and 1.1, then I'm just gonna say it's about the same. It's not particularly scientific, but I think it's good enough for what we're trying to accomplish here. And where did I get this arrows pointing up, down, and to the right? Well, this is just a character map. You could find a character map, and in the character map that's available in every Windows uh, laptop or computer, you will find these arrows, and you can use them as a character for your trend uh, return statement. So there you go. I've uh, now placed our trend calculation here in the card. I've also added our trend here to our table, so I could e give a little bit more context for any of these numbers. So here we see product C last week is the same, 16 week is up, uh, product A four week is down, eight week is up, 16 about the same. So given the whatever uh, span of uh, range we select, that uh, trend will change relative to that period. And as you play with the data, you could click on different salespeople. So here you could see the trend is up for Mary, the trend is down for Kathy. Uh, you could go ahead, pull up Excel, do the math and see if the trend works. I've done it on my own and it seems to be pretty solid. That's about it for today. If you found this interesting, please go ahead into the description of the video where you will find a link to the blog. And in the blog, I will post a link to the data. So you can take a look at the data set, play with the calculation, and validate whether what I'm doing makes sense. Hope you found this video to be interesting. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you come back soon. Bye.